situation we ought to hold in high esteem. If we, in our time, allow the integrity of God's word to fall on the ground, we'll be tied those people. I believe God has put a word of holiness in my mouth and I'm going to preach it. There is a decline, that is, level of decline that is going on. And you sort of wonder what is going on. And this will not dawn again. There is a kingdom to which you belong when you give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, you make your allegiance to the king, to obey him. And that from today, from that day, the lordship, the kingship, the control of his dominion is was established in your life. When you say, be my Lord and Savior, when you confess the Lordship of Christ, it means you made your allegiance to total obedience to His will. You are ready to submit yours for His. You are ready to throw yours away for His. Then, the Lord rules you through two major instruments or institutions. Like in democracy, you have, you have the executive, you have the legislature, you have the judicial it's as if something like that operates here. But I'm not, I'm not saying this is democracy at all. No, don't confuse yourself. I'm not talking about, but I'm just giving you a point. The first authority that we are not to disobey is the authority of this infallible world. That is the constitution of this kingdom. Everybody obeys it. Do you know the shocking truth about the kingdom of God? That God Almighty obeys his word. Do you know what Psalm, the book of Psalms says? That God has exalted his word above all his names. Do you know that when you come in prayer and you are pleading with God and you refer him to what this book holds? I cannot go back on it. One of the strongest weapons to use in prayer. Oh God, remember your word. This is what he said. And you see the power of the kingdom move in operation. Even God, do you know what he said? Heaven and earth can pass away. Not a dot can fall from this thing. When you get to a point where you disregard the word, you are doomed. When you get to a point where you don't fear God's word, you are finished. When you get to a point where you are, your reference for this thing has crumbled, you are done, you are, you are finished. It devastated taken the last thing for you. You have the profession, you have lost the substance. I pray, oh God, let your word have place in my heart. Jesus talked to the disciples, he said, God, you twelve. You see this one they left? And he said, You know why? My word has no place in them. They heard it, it has no place in them. And that day I began to cry, let your word have a place in my heart. I reference your word. I read Psalm 119 and I see David said, I rejoice in your word like a man that has found great treasure. He says, Preserve me, O Lord, for I reverence your word. The second authority that God has instituted for us that we are not to disobey is the authority of the Holy Spirit. When He speaks next to the word, the Holy Spirit is to be obeyed. But it might shock you to know that God placed Himself under His Word. He placed the Holy Spirit under His Word. If you come up and say the Holy Spirit said to me and they contradict the Constitution, you are lying because the Holy Spirit will not do it. You head for something else. If you come up and say God told me and God told you to break this Word, the devil will talk to you. If you come and give yourself confidence to be doing what is at the scripture, you have satanic boldness. You have armed yourself in the strength of the evil one, and they will fail you. They will come. There is satanic boldness. You come bold in doing it. And you know my shit. If people who commit sin should be ashamed. People who do evil should be ashamed. So that's why they hide. But when you do, you, you, you do it boldly, you know when I'm robbed, becomes a societal norm. And for one, it becomes the heralded thing. 
That is when you talk about decline of society. The God authority God is seated. You and I are asked to obey is the spiritual authority has placed over us in the body of Christ. That's why he gave us pastors, evangelists, prophets, and leaders. But God placed the Holy Spirit under his word. He placed the pastors under his word. If the pastor starts leading you contrary to what is stated here, call that in Moses 2. Of course, the Bible even said, if we, the apostle Paul writing, the great apostle of the New Testament church, said, if we, that means if I, Paul, or any other, tell you what else that is not here, let that man be accursed. That is one of the greatest words. There are 12 words of ministry. The people think today ministry is where you make it, so they are rushing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for anybody going into ministry for such reasons. Sorry. Funny enough, I was with Brother Stan yesterday night, and they were talking about it. I didn't know if I said it there or after I left. I said, all I can say, that the era we are living in, that there is acts on everything, on every road. The ones that refuse to peer fruit, you will look for them soon, you won't find them. And I'm telling you this thing, so when you hear, this person used to be past for this, and he's dead, and he, his carcass is somewhere. Don't blame God. If somebody, is, the Bible says, if you're disobedient and rebellious, you will dwell in the dry land. You cannot get to a point where you, know, you don't care. God. People die in church for lying and this is virus. And people think they can get bored to a level. There is acts on trees. The judgment is on our nation, but it actually started in the church. I'm not saying that one was a judgment, but it's as if the pattern began in the church. It began with ministers. Ministers were going, one and this one and this one. Some died in the pulpit. Some went home and said bye-bye to a, a congregation after preaching. Next day, they didn't see them. Three days after, they broke the door. I'm telling you about this, your nation. They broke the door. I found the man is dead with his stomach swollen. Nobody touched him. Now, he has stepped to the nation and the effect of it is being felt on the land. And you think judgment begins with the household of God. And the Bible says if judgment begins with the household of God, if God is going to sanitize the land, he's going to sanitize us first. And if we think that we will raise as light and as short, we'll use our servant and think God will preserve it, that's a lie. The servo was within his softness. The salt. And the light decides to be darkness. And God think you think God will call darkness light? Mm. He said, if the light be in you, if the light in you there is that is darkness, then how great is darkness itself? There's a call to a holy living to the end time church. Because Christ is not coming for a church with spot and wrinkle. He's coming for one without spot and wrinkle. There's a call for sanctity. There's a call for Christians to separate themselves. Be a Christian. Didn't even know that you're one. You made an election to the kingdom of God. You will delivered from the kingdom of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's son. There are things we don't have here. It's not in our character. There are things we don't do here. There are things we don't do here. There are things that are known there. Oh, here, we don't do it. There is a Christian culture. I want to begin on what I'm calling the defense of the faith, the defense of the family, the defense of your life, the defense of your Christian work, the defense of the truth. Hear this. 6,000 years after Adam tried the first sin, and 2,000 years after Jesus brought the remedy. We are still seeing the devastations and the calamity and the effect of sin on, on family. You do not have enough to pay for disobedience. You do not have enough to pay for an unholy living. You don't have enough to pay for five minutes when the sin that you commit comes to make his demand. You don't. Six thousand years. Two 
2000, after Christ had died, so this came with the primary mission to save man from sin. The effect is still seen all over the place. I read First Corinthians chapter 15. And on verse 22. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Meaning, just like Adam's sin brought death to the whole of human family, God planned for everybody to be saved through Christ. Also. So the remedy is thorough, just like the sin and the fall is real. But yet we still see effects. We are seeing deaths. We still see sicknesses. We still see accidents. We still see untimely deaths. The results of the fall, yet Christ has provided the answer. We still see these things. Somebody said, why? Two reasons. An answer has been provided, but God is not forcing it on anybody. And so, you refuse to get saved, you refuse to get born again, you die in your sins. You die here to begin another journey of horror. The Bible calls it women with anachiatis. But here it is. You decide to make the profession of the Lordship of Christ and fail to walk in the covenant, the same spirit follows you with those who are in the dark. You read the parable to pastors who is that faithful and good steward whom the master placed over his house. He's placed me here to give them their meeting their season. You read it in Matthew 25. Give them their meeting their season. I am doing my job feeding you. He said, blessed is that servant when his master returns, he shall find him so doing. Then what to that one when his master comes, he finds him drinking and getting drunk with the harlots. He said, feed my flock. He is not messing around with the world. He said the master will have a portion in will cut in the business and give you a portion with the, the with the with the unbelievers. Where there will be weeping and national teeth. He is now sharing the same fate with those who are not salvaged. It tells a parable of that one that is given talents, and those ones given talents, and one who hid his talents when he was instructed occupied till I come. He said we will be cast into outer darkness. Where there will be weeping and national. He said, Can a Christian go to hell? We see that in the Bible. A pastor can go to hell. Somebody who has stood at the altar and said, Come into my heart, can still go to hell. Why? If he fails to walk into what he has come into, you have made your allegiance. You are a citizen. You fail to live according to the tenets of the kingdom. You are breaking the constitution, breaking the laws of the land, and corrupting others. And it's not just hell. Because you decide to choose darkness, the Lord of darkness will be allowed to have effect on your life here. That is why you can read the same result to anti covenant on people who are not in God's covenant. Have you read your Old Testament? Israel will walk in God's covenant. They will become so favored, so powerful, so blessed. They will have a season when they decide to pull out. They become so coarse, and sometimes I don't believe as look better than them. But I have something to say. When you see the soul, the harvest doesn't come that day. If you see it at night, it doesn't even germinate that morning. The next morning. The Bible says, because sentence against evil is not immediate, men's heart are put in them to continue. That's why there is not a way that seems good to man, but the end is evil. In Romans 5 14.
Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, and even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So Adam was a shadow of him that was to come, a shadow of Christ. That's why Jesus is called the second Adam. The first brought the destruction, the second brought the remedy. But Adam, by one sin, surrendered the whole of mankind over to the devil and to death. Death began to reign and to exercise dominion over mankind, even over those who have not directly done what Adam did. Sin became not just an act, it became a nature. That's why salvation is a necessity. There is no way out except you get recreated, you will receive eternal life. It's not just repent of an act. Your nature has been affected and corrupted has to be changed too. So being born again is not changing your moral life, changing your moral code. It's your nature being transformed and then the fruit that follows will also follow. When you get born again, God changes your nature. So there are some things that you should be afraid to. There are some things, I don't know, you, 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 you can't even think of doing it. But this is still a corrupting of the people of God. It's a ministry of corrupting the sense that the devil has. Where it gets to a point of people who should fear evil because of the fear of God now drink it like water. Pastor Sarako, bring your Bible. There's one of the studies we made. Come and sit down. There's one of the studies we made during this honeymoons. And uh, I want you to watch or study the Bible. For reasons, I want us to do comparative. Hey, give me another mic. I want to do good. Study on the fall of man. But. I'm going to take Eve, you take Adam. So, yes. Tell me all the mistakes Adam made. So I won't make it. Then I'll tell you all the mistakes Eve made. So you won't make it. And then I picked my own paper and drew it into two columns. Adam, Eve. Then after we drew another column, what correction do you offer to Adam? Based on the word. And what should I offer to Eve? So she drew her own and drew my own. At the end of it, we began to compare the things we saw. I want you to see it. First of all, read Genesis. I'll get the scripture before we start it. I'll show you what is there. If anybody thinks that he can toy with sin, you're joking. You're playing with fire. Listen to this. In Genesis chapter 3, that's where the story is recorded. My Bible gave a caption on top of chapter 3, The Disobedience of Man. I don't know what your own titled it, but just before we settle on the fall, how they disobeyed and what followed, why don't you see what God said to them initially? Before Eve came in, God said to Adam, in chapter 1, verse Twenty-six. He began, he said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the earth, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he, he male and female created he them. In other words, at that time, Adam was both man and woman in one body. Like God. God is a father, God is a mother, but one person. But later in chapter 2, you see where God separated the feminine qualities out of Adam and made a woman out. But now, certain things followed. You will see, and God created man in his only made verse 27. In the image of God created him, male and female created them. And God blessed them. And God did what? Blessed. And said, 
unto them. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it for and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over every creeping thing that moved upon the earth. That included the serpent and the devil. Notice, it's not that they don't have the power to control the devil. They had it. They had the power to control the devil. If they didn't have the power to control the devil, then they should have no reason to for blaming them. But now, look at this. God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good, especially the fact that all of them were under man's control. And then in chapter 2, Verse 8, God planted a garden in this world in Eden, and there he put man that he has made. So God gave him accommodation. We see all that. He gave him accommodation before giving him a wife. He gave him provision. For example, verse 5 said, Every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every half of the field before it was in the earth, for the Lord has not caused it to rain. Then the next thing you are going to read is that in that garden, verse 9, out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God gave man everything and said, go ahead and eat. So he gave him provision. He gave him accommodation, he gave him provision. Read down after you will see that he gave him a wife. But before giving him a wife, he gave him an instruction, a commandment. Verse 15, God took the man here and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. What is the first instruction? What is the first instruction? To dress it and to keep it. What does it mean to keep it? NIV said to guard it, to protect it. Man, protect your home. Man, guard your home. Then dress it. Dress it means beautify it. Manage it. Keep it alive. Mean that when God planted a garden, it was Adam's duty to dress the flowers. When God gave him a house, it was his duty to sweep it. When God gave him food, it was his duty to prepare it and have it. Dressing it included everything about managing and maintaining in order to keep that thing with other standards or to make it go beyond. Then the next instruction is. To keep it, that is protected. Why would God say protect something if somebody will not make assault on it? Why would God say get it if there won't be somebody trying to break into it? Marriage need to be protected. Homes need to be guarded. Children need to be covered. The same assault that took place in the garden will take place. The church needs to be guarded and protected because it's a God's family. It's a reflection of the nuclear family. Or the same answer that took place will take place. And now, this in the first instruction, there is the second one. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. This is the, the second instruction. Where, where, where is the first? I'm sorry. If we bring three in the garden, yes, that is from verse 16. The second instruction said, and the Lord. God commanded the man. If I want to use another word, instructed or made a constitution for the man. You are going to rule the earth, govern it. You are going to have dominion. For you too, you must obey the word. Your authority will remain as long as you are subject to the word. This is what you must obey. Your first instruction, keep the garden, dress the garden. Protect your home, keep it. Beautiful. Second instruction, of the tree and the Lord commanded man saying of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat eat anyone one cup of poor orange anything apple whatever you want it wasn't apple there is the envoy the DC envoy from worry there's a tape they brought I have it in my car he said Adam saw apple and lose control yeah 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 it wasn't apple <laughs> he said, and Eve saw apple and get long throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not apple. 
of every tree, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Hear it. Any day you test of that one, God said, don't test. Death begins in you. Were they buried the same day? No. You can die, and then death will show its effect two days after. You can die before the accident occurs. You can die before they say, Pastor, rush to the hospital. He's going. You can die before you reach hell. Death begins the moment sin is committed. Sin kills. Sin is a serpent's poison. Sin is a stain of a serpent. It injects venom that starts its destructive effect on that person's life. It is not something to toy with. I saw here, before God gave him a wife, he gave him accommodation, he gave him a profession, because he gave him a job. Looking after that whole garden and looking after the whole world is not a small job. He gave him provision, so he gave him what to eat. So from there I've learned, if you don't have a house, don't look for a woman. If you don't, it's true. If you don't know how to feed yourself, you can't feed him. But you know the funny thing? He didn't end with all those ones. He now gave him a direction. He gave him instruction codes for living. That means if you're not born again, you don't even know why you are here, you don't even know the rules of living. You don't need a woman. You will be worse than before. After instructing him on all that, he now separated the feminine character, he put it in a separate body and brought it out. And said, this is a helmet made for you. Your perfection is in her. You can't be complete except with her. That means my greatest achievement will be found in this lady. If this ministry is real, if I'm a sincere man of God, the first place you should show is in her. And you understand what I'm saying? If what I preach works, it should first show what? Yeah. If I say I'm a giver, I can't practice it here, that's failure. If I think I teach love, I can't practice it here, that's failure. What I told her, I said, the first pregnancy you're going to carry for me. <laughs> I said, it's everything God has taught me, everything is in me. Both the anointing, the knowledge, everything. The covenant that works in my life, everything. And we study sometimes twice in the world, unfailingly once. Unfailingly. We wake up, we, we, we study this thing with it, and, and sometimes you, 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 the anointing become as tangible as the air you breathe. Why? Now, I want you to see something. Now, chapter 3 opens, and something terrible happens. And every beauty here was lost. You see, cancer came because of this. Death came because of this. Accident came because of this. Abacha and all their holy guys came because of this. All the problems, yes. If they were still retaining the image of God, superimposing them, they will not be acting that way. The armed robber is operating because of this. He got the wrong nature. Something has happened to the human family. The mistake of Adam is still being made today. Even after redemption. Because ask me, Medical doctor, well, I don't know, Pastor Mike is gone, or anybody who is in the school of medicine, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If somebody catches leprosy, you cure him. God uses leprosy to symbolize sin. You cure him. And remove the effect of that for him. And he goes back to leprosy and catches it again. He has gotten infected again. It's not that he was not healed, but it's just that he got infected again. That's why God saves you from your sin from your sin it was said from my sin not in my sin he doesn't treat you and keep you in impurity he removes you from it and saves you from the destruction he doesn't keep you in it God doesn't save you in your sin that means keep doing what you're doing he saves you from it he removes you from where you are removed from the effects and then from that life and conduct so that's where we begin and Adam knew his wife. No, 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 no. Before this pregnancy, there is a first pregnancy. I said the first pregnancy is the one he was supposed to carry for Adam. Everything he was taught, everything he was commanded before Eve came, he was supposed to make her know it. He was supposed to impregnate that woman with his conduct of life, the system that they are supposed to follow. 
after she had nurtured the day, you bring kids because you are going to teach those children the same thing. And now in chapter 3, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field with the Lord God has made. So you can see that the problem began with the devil coming in. The devil was introduced. And once the devil was introduced, the problem started. Did God let them know that there was a devil? Absolutely. The tree of life represented the devil. The tree of life represented God and his kingdom. The tree of evil, knowledge of good and evil represented the devil. God in chapter 1 divided light from darkness, telling that there is now evil, there is now good. There is now darkness, there is now light. So you have a choice. He taught Adam all that. That's why First Timothy chapter 2 said Adam was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. First Timothy chapter 2. Adam was not what? Deceived. His wife was. That means she was not as informed as him. But now look at this. Now the serpent was more subtle than the, any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of the, every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for God for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. Verse 7, the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they shoe thick leaves together and made themselves apple. And they had the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife had hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And Adam called on, and God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I had thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. He didn't say the truth. It wasn't because you were naked. You have been naked. Why were you not afraid of all the other time? He said the reason is because I'm naked. That's why I'm hiding. Did God just remove your clothes? If your, your clothes is removed, you removed it. He was clothed with the glory, but the Bible said, man, see, to fall short of the glory of God. He lost it. So, and the Lord said, and the Lord, and he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Where did this revelation come from? Has thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat. Instead of saying, Yes, I did, and repenting, he said, The woman whom thou gave verse to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Say, Your wife is your reason for disobedience is a terrible deception. The reason. You are misbehaving is your wife. You are lying to your face. Now look at this. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? The woman, instead of doing the same thing, repenting, you know what she said? The serpent begoed me and I did it. And when God didn't say the serpent, why did you do it? Because he said it's called the evil. Everyone said the evil. That's for where we got devil. Devil is a short form of the evil. You don't ask evil where he got evil. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, he started laying punishment. He didn't give a chance to explain. Punishment. But I thought he was stuck with the devil. Because these people transfer blame. When he was through with the devil, he turned to the woman. When he was through with the woman, I thought he would have stopped him after Adam didn't start it. You know what he did? He turned to Adam. I think I want to read it the other way around because we know that the devil is cursed. Hell is prepared for him. But Eve is joining him now and Adam is joining him. 
Hell was not prepared for these two. The earth was prepared for them. How come they are joining together in the course? What we had, they were blessed, not cursed. How come the cause is not come? Since then, hell has been receiving mankind. And the form it and the effect of it is seen all over the earth. Now, I want you to see. If I want to go from Adam backward, who was said to Adam? Unto Adam he said, verse 21. No, no, no. Unto Adam he said in verse 17. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, meaning you should have listened when she said, Go beyond the constitution. I, the God that commands, obeys the law. God doesn't eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I, the one who said the word, is subject to the word. And I place you in charge here. You said your wife suggested to you. You see why the, the, the real of many governments is because of bad counselors. Or yet those governments will pay. They take responsibility for what they do. A badger could be killed by bad counselors. Psychophants superimpose on yourself on this nation. People are praying. Even on believers are praying. People are eating God's name and was stopped. I don't care whether you say it's American CIA, you say he was caught with women, whatever you like, say. There is a cause for the effects. There is what? A cause for the effects. Not the first president to chase women. Because that, is, that means your wife is not an excuse. It's not an excuse for disobeying the world. It's not an excuse for saying yes to the devil. It's not an excuse for committing toil with sin. When he came to the woman, he placed it. We still see the pain of child there. We see all the other five problems of women brought here, five of man. Well, now, I'm not going to settle on it. And then, of course, the devil has his own. He was there, he was prophesied the seed of the woman. But today, I'm not going to tell you to talk to the men. I want you to talk to the women. What did he do wrong? Let me talk to the man. Let's see if we can find out. For what we just read in the Bible, I want to point out to you what I found out that the woman did. Number one, I'll read Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, the first thing she did was that she went and started having a conversation with the devil. And that is where it begins. That was where the problem started. She went and started having a conversation with the devil. Listen, the devil still talks today. He still talks. He still talks. In other words, the seed was sown because she gave audience to the devil. If you begin to nurture the fact that you can sleep with somebody's husband, it won't happen that day. Just give it time. But don't think you will get away because you will still pay for it. If you want to nurture the point, and you can, there's so many things touch not my nothing you can touch. It won't, it won't happen that day. If you want to, there are so many trees of knowledge of good and evil here. The ones that keep, are they not here? Fornication. You want to know church. And people can start by conversing with the devil. You get feelings that enhances such things. All kinds of nonsense movies are on. Get it, watch it, laugh with it, enjoy it, or you're most likely to do it. One day, you will start seeing what Eve saw. Eve saw that it was good for food. It was something to be desired to make one wise. There must be something here. Forget all these things. They can preach whatever I like. Bible has some rules. There must be another explanation to it. And once you want another explanation, the devil has it ready. Did you see the explanation he gave her? You will not surely die. Please continue. After that, I wondered, does it mean that she didn't know 
the instruction God gave Adam. She knew, but she decided to listen to what the devil had to say. She then chose the devil's answer instead of God's answer. That means she doubted God's word. That was another problem she had. Then, apart from doubting God's word, she doubted the word of her husband. Because so her husband must have told her that she shouldn't eat of that food. But when the devil told her, she said, say what the devil said. And she became enticed by her own desire. She desired that thing and she became enticed by it. And then if you read the Bible says she saw. Let me read verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, because she had listened to the devil, she had bought the devil's idea, she became deceived and she began, she began to see something beneficiary in what the devil had for her. Another problem she had was she listened to the devil and the devil asked her a question and she answered. Verse 2 said, You need to take note of what is going on here. It happens to many of you. Do you know when Satan is talking to you? Do you know when the devil is offering you advice? And it doesn't start one day or it takes days. He comes and is discussing with you. And you what do you watch those things? For me, I made a personal commitment. I don't just watch it, I watch my wife. When she starts having this, this there's a tape here keeping the serpent out of your garden is here there's another message here welcome to the garden is here <laughs> yeah. once she opens her mouth to talk to me if she had a discussion with satan i know i know what to keep sometimes i don't speak to you, some of you guys when you start talking with satan i know when you open your mind, you're not talking. I know you have been having discussions with them. But the problem is, do you know when serpent is talking to you? Now after some time, you start buying into his ideas. It will be like that after over time. One day you commit one. And they will be talking to you. You just believe that you are justified for what you are doing. Meanwhile, you, you just borrow something from them. <laughs> that thing will kill you. Satan doesn't like you to function the way God wants you to function. See how God made garden, planted that garden for them, placed them inside that garden. The guy crawled in. He saw authority. He still knew he could not attack whatever. Adam. He went to the woman and said, hey. And nobody knows how many days they were doing this discussion. And from time to time he will come, they will discuss, talk about trees, talk about birds, talk about different things, and he will go. He kept coming. So they kept having that discussion. There are even some pastor's wives that I warn my wife not to go near. Not that in this ministry, or whatever. There are certain ladies I warn her. People this is where we came. There are certain ladies that their own is that they 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 advise it and certain advise them and they are they have gone very far. I see the such person coming around my wife. I give my wife ten warning. I don't let Satan talk to me. Do you know what you are giving him here? Because if you give him attention, he will give you direction. If you give Satan attention, he will give you direction. If you give Satan attention, he will give you direction. I know where his direction takes people to. If you give Satan attention, he will give you direction. Do you know when Satan is discussing with you? Do you know when Satan? Do you know when you have bought his ideas, bought his philosophies? Do you know? The counsel of the ungodly. The way of sin as the seat of scorn. Play the table. And God help us understand these things. And the woman said to the devil, to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You see, she took the secret that they had and gave it to the devil. So she was the one that supplied the information to the devil. Notice that. And so the devil used the information to supply it, to, to hamper. Same happens to us today. Most times we are the ones 
that supplied the information to the devil before he points back to attack. And then verse 6 said, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired, she took of the fruit. She did not consult her husband. She did not consult her husband before taking action. You have an idea, you have a desire, you have a thought. She should have consulted her husband first before making the decision. She didn't. And so she took Take note the of that. Women, are you hearing what I'm saying? Take note of that. That is where rebellion, the first rebellion in the woman family was born. You could have caught a new vision. She caught a new revelation. And this three doesn't kill. Consult the one who God placed as the authority. It happens in church administration, assistant pastor or usher or whatever. But there's something new you have to consider. Something could be a good idea, but it might end you in trouble. Why don't you consult the people to whom you ask? This one is the one people don't like. You will be safe if you consult authorities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter how confused you have got, you have still not fallen. Even if you didn't know, you mistakenly talked to the devil. You didn't know. Eh? Before you make a decision, why don't you consult authority? I have faced this temptation before. When this car first came, this jeep, I heard it very clearly in my spirit man. That jeep belongs to you. Go for it. Get it. I said jeep get. I did it then. I heard that jeep belongs to you. If you lose that jeep, you have missed your car harvest. So after some as I developing into as I talking to you, the owner, but the owner wanted to dispose it. And all that. As I talking with them, but I just had this check. I said, let me clarify with my senior pastors, with my mentors. Let me clarify. And my flesh told me, you know they will tell you no, because there are one or two of the senior pastors that are senior to you that don't drive Jeep. Some drive, some don't know, some have very wonderful cars, but not Jeep. Are you, what are you doing with Jeep? Why don't you claim? Now, now, that's what my, I, I, I'm supposed to do. So I said, even before I make this decision, I would, not my flesh. That's what I'm supposed to do. But my flesh now told me, you know now, they will tell you no. That was my flesh told me. They will tell you no. So just go ahead and get this thing. You have faith to do it, just get it. I called one of my covenant brothers, discussed it with him. By the way we discussed, he said, just mention it to them, mention it to them first. So that you'll be on the safe side. Because early that year, early last year, Pastor had told this easy that they should make sure, they should make sure that I get a car immediately after night of glory. That they should make sure I get a vehicle. That I pay price in the way or whatever. That how can I be pastoring that church and not have a vehicle? He thought I had a vehicle, then I sold as I given out my car. So I thought about it and it was a it was a struggle for me. But I thought to myself, car can go to hell. Though. Let me stay undercover. Can someone say undercover? Say undercover. Let me stay on that call. So I picked my phone. I didn't like the idea. I picked my phone. I called Pastor Mike. I said, sir, there's this whatever that came out and all that. I described the vehicle, said everything. I said, should I go ahead? He said, no, don't yet. He said, who came to your church and talked about car? I said, PCG. He said, call PCG. Whatever it tells you to do, do. I said, thank you, sir. I called PCJ, explained everything to him, that CEO is like this, like this. He said, don't worry, I'm the one giving you the instruction. Go and get that car. I said, eh? He said, get it, I'll back you. I said, sir? He said, get it. So we went ahead, and the car, maybe I got the car, I carried the car to me and showed it to the city. I see it too. When I had the opportunity, I took it, I showed it to my wife. I see it. He said, no problem. And all that. 
when and there was this fear that what if they say because you are talking with Satan and now it's time to make decision. You just go and do it. Some of you don't consult leadership before you do it because you are afraid leadership will tell you the opposite thing. For example, I've given a law that I don't permit people to travel beyond 4 p.m. I've given a law and heaven and earth will bear me witness. Plus you yourself listening to me will bear me witness. I'm doing my best to pastor you, to love you, to cover you and all that. But I will do as, as much as I can now based on the grace of God God has given me. I, I, I will not go beyond what I don't, what I cannot do. I will not override your will. And I paid money. It was sacrificed for me. I gave the Kenna 20,000 to go to Lagos. To fly to Lagos. I bought maybe 16,000, 17,000 of flights. And I needed him back. But he knew that he had a good reason, but he did something very terrible. He had a good reason. You can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. Sincerely very wrong. He knows that if, he, if I told him to call me this morning, you know, that if he calls me and I say, okay, you're done. He said, yes. I said, okay, whatever. I will put money into his account for him to come back. I need him to come back. I didn't want him to do this road thing. I decided to go to the pain, go to that sacrifice. Just for this once. He finishes yesterday. He didn't tell anybody. He went to the park and took my boss. We have not finished mourning God, you know. You don't even know what goes on. After I finish, he says, I enter down my room. You don't know what I go through. Still on me. That's what means that you don't know. It's only my wife that knows that one. I come out here, I have to be strong, I have to be bold for, for you guys. He takes my boss. He said he checked his spirit. He did all those things. Thank God God brought him here safely. But, 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 <laughs> but, you know, devil doesn't visit people every day. He goes to and fro. That he finishes with, with Donald. He has to travel, maybe go to Australia, find some people. And before he comes back, and all that you could do some things and get away with it. Devil doesn't stay with one person on one night. He gave Jesus three powerful temptations. Jesus knocked him and he left him for a season. He traveled to go and do some other things and later I will come and meet Jesus again. That's it. Some of you have done terrible things. Nobody knows. You thought you got away with it. He it. He takes night balls. This morning I called early this morning while we we're praying, some things were clicking and all that. I called Pastor Steve abroad, told him certain things. I called Barista Joma and whatever. And I gave her instruction. I gave I sent the Kenna's number to her. I should call it Kenna. The Kenna should go there, pick some things and then get to the airport. I spoke to him early in the morning. He said he lied to me that he, he was going to. <laughs> That I was going to be going to the airport around 10, 10 30. You know why he was on the road? Come, bear me witness. Now, God is not alive to make his own confession. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, 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 I am not the best, but I do my best to be sincere to, to pastor God's people. God knows that I love you guys. I will do it with all my heart. I will do it as much as I can my life. But I will not override your way. I won't. I won't. Say that day, now, I say, I told Chica to keep going to me. I don't know. I don't have all the things. I'm not God. And if God doesn't show me by word of knowledge or visions or whatever, show me some other things. The ones in the field that I need for now, they have shown me. And that one, I'm here to preach. And, and the other, they didn't show me. Things that are not revealed belong to God. Things that are revealed belong to us. So I don't know. He tells me he will go to airport by ten. So I did a network on phone. But I started calling another. I said, "Oh, not available." So he came. You saw me. I don't always know things. Sometimes I have word of noise. Sometimes it doesn't function. It's not twenty-four hours. It functions. Judas knew that Jesus doesn't function in one of the 24 hours. That's why Judas took that thing to betray him. 
He knew sometimes Jesus does not function in that. So he comes back. I was hearing him. Oh, welcome. You took flight. Powerful and all that. He came to tell me that he came by road. He took my boss. Gold. He said, I'm pure of his blood. He should anything have happened. Pure. Anybody can say, I give him. I did whatever. God knows the truth. God knows the heart of me. Do you know what he took me to bring that money? That money I gave me to fly. For the NYC, I told him to leave the February. Just what I'm talking about. Five hours ago. I'm funding his movement to cancer. And then you lie to me and take road. On that same road. I'm a wasaka. You take that road, my boss. Anyway, it is called satanic word. Did you hear it? It's called what? That thing that makes a goat stand in the road and tell her it's coming. He's standing there. It's satanic boldness. You better be careful about such things. Thank God for the mercy of God. Forget. Can't you confirm from leadership before you take this step? You finish talking with Satan. He said the disciple gave me, I took from her eight. Then she now used her influence and subdued her husband. And said, We are putting this in your mouth. Or oh, no romance this night. The foolish man collected her eight. And the whole human family fell. 6.2 billion people fell in Adam in one day. I pray to this God that will serve in the name of His Son Jesus that whatever God intends to do in my life, in your lives, through this retreat, that God will succeed. Amen. That's my prayer. That God will succeed. Already, I'm already mourning in my heart concerning someone like Pastor Ambrose who has been missing all these things. I don't know how, how he gets that kind of boldness to be missing things like this. There are certain things I cannot do. I don't even need anybody to tell me that something I cannot do. I don't know. Let's be going. God has different kind of children. I'm learning that they had to praise the Lord. Jesus even had twelve. One was Judas, and he was Jesus. Me, I'm David. I cannot be as fast as him. Yet, yeah, you know, he had all kind of children. When I was having my party scene, that was what. I was hearing in my spirit that God has different types of children that I should learn it. I should stop. I should focus on the ones that are obedient. I should stop kidding myself over the ones that, that decide to do some kind of things. I'm telling you, that's the instruction I was getting when I want to take my back. They have different kinds of children. Don't leave them. Be praying for them. Cover them. And know that some that you think are bad today will be good tomorrow. Praise the Lord. So you think are very good today will be very, 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 very terrible tomorrow. See some that are first will be last, last. I don't know. So you just leave all of them to be growing. Child, they will think that he has a good reason. That he's doing no more. That's why I cannot do the treat. No problem. But the day that shows up, they have, have enough to protect that child. And you understand what I'm talking about? God does not come in for entertainment. May He accomplish in our life. And then those of our brethren that are not here, trust God that God will make you a channel through which you will pass these teachings and some of these revelations to them. So they can profit by it. Trust that mind is a very sensitive here. And let me say this, let me say this because when I made an announcement before you left, some of you got shocked or whatever. I told about somebody I saw in prophetic conference. This fat guy who come around me and whatever at this. I will call him, uh, I call him Biggie. His name is Emeka. And now they told me he died yesterday. I mean, he did for yesterday. He just slumped and died. So his diabetes, however. You don't need to be afraid of death. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You don't need to be afraid. Let me tell you, if you want <laughs> to live life, be relevant to God. Be relevant to the purpose of God. Be very relevant to his purpose. 
in this end time. I bring you God's word. Be relevant to what God is doing now. You can look at it and say, get out of this place. And it will obey. Be relevant. Now, one major way to be relevant, what we're praying this morning, but I've not talked about it. He says, sleep G12. Eat G12. Drink G12. Talk G12. Breathe G12. From this retreat, now start making your list. You must deliver to God 12 souls. Minimum that you are pastoring, that you are training, that you are reading for God. God will protect you if you do so. See it here. Tell him on. I've told you. You think this year is not going to be like last year. You'll be doing like you're doing training, you're not doing the fully full. Start affecting the lives of people. You don't have them, beg them in this retreat. Beg them now. When they cry and beg them, they will look at you. Be relevant to the purpose of God. Amen. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to tell them. Tell them what they have to do. See, the thing that I teach you, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So whatever you see me have taught you or you have heard pastor, teach us. God, teach them. Praise the Lord. Empower them. Love them. Care for them. Play the table. Why don't you ask them? Look at, look at just came up with this. Don't, don't you think that if we do this? He said, yes, it's right. Because we know better. Rebellion begins. For some other people, it's revelation they caught. You know, the deception of Eve was a revelation. I had to pause to tell you this. Suppose it's revelation. You just pick one great rema in the Bible. Say, wow, this is what I want to start preaching now. Don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and your fear is that you don't want to ask your leader, let them not laugh at you. Just I I show this in the Holy Spirit is why I'm opening my eyes to this thing. You now can be preaching heresy. There's something there's a thing I brought here, the virus of deception. The virus. What is that? It's called the virus of deception. <laughs> you need to listen to that message. You can take Bible and say what he didn't say. And you'll be feeling, my God, hey, you don't see what the donor was doing the other day. Not this donor, but the one that I gave him book it. It was preaching error. They are not finished. It was preaching error. I looked at him, I just shook him. I just shook him. Error. So you can't preach it on you know, see what Apollos was doing. Apollos had utterance. Have you not read your Bible? And was passing hell. Aquila and Priscilla called and said, Bring me out. Thank God that the man was meek. He said, They say your revelation is faulty. Settle down. They corrected some things for him. When he now knew it, I believe he thanked them and went back to the Bible. He mightily convinced the Jews. That thing, that gift he was using, he was used to pass error before. And I sent you to that or that place, they say, that church. Now go there and start feet washing. I have caught my revelation. This one, one day, he didn't tell me what today he's still denying it. I took his note where he was studying. He said they are Ravinic Christian and they are Dodi Christians. He said I give him in his note. Ravinic and Dodi. Then you put him in a small Bible study. You say, brother, there's something I want to show you. Error. Error. Did you see what I did to you undercover? I said, when after God finished, you show me, show me the seven edges. At the end of it, I wrote, confirm from PCG. <laughs> That's what I wrote under. But God, even before God, I was saying, when God, God will tell me one edge, I said, prove it. He will give me scriptures. 
it will tell me and everything I taught you, see them, see examples, see where it was used in the Bible, see everything. I still wrote under the confirm BCG. Would you have revelation? I do you know I can eat my tight for some time. I saw a scripture that I was there. You should take that tight and use it and buy anything you want to buy. It's in the Bible. Whatever your soul lost it for. Somebody has used scripture to tell someone not to pay back. There is revelation. Confirm from leadership. Say amen. amen. It must not be me. Find the leader you respect. Confirm from that one. Amen. 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 Yes, please. Tim. With that area where people take decision without consulting who should they should come. You must know who answers to you. You must know who you answer to. Think about the auto suggestion. What did we use the man? Your husband has taught you you were not there when God was talking to him. So when you came, he didn't he didn't teach, he didn't come. God didn't come down and start saying Eve. But actually it is the word of God. As a person made an image of God, she can know he had a God said it. It is a lie, she will know. Today we have the Bible to know. Today we have the Bible to know. And you got the word of God, somebody came and said something else. There is an instruction, there is a, a principle of leadership. Somebody will come and begin to give you other suggestion or other. You think this devil talking today, that day, what did the devil use? A serpent. His original name here, they call him Leviathan. He was a four footed beast. It was after the talk causing that you begin to trek on you, move on your on your on your belly. The ghost. The devil possess something because they could communicate with the animals. Today he doesn't come. He will talk to you through somebody. How did he talk to Jesus? Peter, don't go and die on the cross. How are you going to do that? How can you conceive this kind of idea? Jesus said, Get thee behind me. What? Satan. The church is a wife of Christ. So Peter was like a wife talking to the husband. And he said the same and said Peter. But here we see the case. The devil came in, gave the suggestion, inquired for the man first. She went ahead and took action. That's why there is now a new order for the Christian home. Now go ahead, I will bring up some things. Right, so, because she had been enticed by what the devil was saying, because she had seen something good in what the devil was saying, she took the food and eat. Unfortunately, she didn't just eat it. She now convinced her husband, or probably enticed her husband to eat the fruit with her. And by doing that, she brought down man. Women, note that one. Man. Note that one. If you bend your heart on it, you can destroy your man, whether you like it or not. Unless, listen, yeah. In the order, God gave man authority, but he gave women. When you are listening to this message, please see it from different perspective. Don't just see it because some of you are not married. This tape is not just for married people. That's not what You saw what Pastor just said now that the church is wife of Christ. And that Peter talking to Jesus was like the wife talking to the husband. And it was Satan that was talking to Peter. As I'm a leader now, those of you that are called leaders, you are like my wife. You saw her serpent use root to make me to allow her to travel. Because you can entice your husband, you have the influence. Sometimes I carry the pastors, I'm asking them questions about what we should do, or should we do something. I just see the guy in the special. I don't talk to you about this. 
When they finish, I'll just go back to my seat. They come at the next day, pass instruction. I don't see that many times. Sometimes I, I call them and we're talking, they are in the spirit. They make sense. Sometimes they're joining the place. Okay. This one, this one, just these two things. I have the revelation that I'm married to my wife, my normal, my real wife, by Sir IJ. Apart from that, I know that you are, all of you here, you are like my wife. You are here with me. So you should, you should use it in different contexts. Are you getting what I'm saying? Pull out the principle out of it. Don't say I'm not married. I can just do this when I get married. You are married to the Lord. You are married to leadership. See, as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. Have you seen that scripture before? Who have used it to pray before? Yeah. The covenant that binds us together is like marriage covenant. Say amen. It's played. Influence. Say with me. Women say we have influence. Men have authority. You can say, ah, you are not leaving this house. Okay, that's authority. Influence will give you one night. Next morning says you can go as far as you want. Influence is more powerful than authority. That's the truth. Authority is one. Uh, yeah, 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 Toto. Sake la dance. Come on. Just one minute. First King to one. Meaning that if you use the influence God has given you, you know what we call seduction in the world, in marriage, it is like it's permitted. Your wife is your only satisfied dear friend. You can be seduced by her. And it's right. But if you get seduced to do evil, judgment will still come. You see, God balanced the, what He gave men and women. He gave men the power of control and gave men the ability to influence the world controlling. That's why go out in the world, you go to Abuja now, you hear of all sorts happening. Leave this in some of the hottest cars in town. And all. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Well, contract. Contract for where? He lives in one of the hottest houses in town. He walks into our office, people who have applied for moons and years and the queen in line waiting. She walks in and walks out. She is given the contract. There is godly influence. If a woman now who is a Christian learns how to exercise godly influence, especially on her husband or, or in their phase of life, there will be a lot of impact. And sometimes when God deals with authorities in the Bible, he uses women. The devil has caught that revelation. When he wants to destroy authorities, he sends women. Look at First King chapter one. The man in the Bible, actually, they gave him one record. He had, he had the one for doing evil. But now the Bible explains to us why he went that far. Verse twenty-five. There was none like unto a help. Which did sell himself to walk wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife steered up. Who was the power behind his evil? Jezebel. When it was Naboth's vineyard, the man wanted the land. He went, he couldn't get it. Naboth said no. He came home and was so, so bad down and was unhappy. Jezebel came and said, What was wrong with you? Say, Naboth, is it only Naboth that is making you? Forget it. Just don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. The next day she wrote a letter. She doesn't have power to execute it. She said, King, give me your ring. That is the seal of that king. They wear it in their hand like ring. Took the seal, sealed the document, sent it. And he told the son and said, So send the king. Tell them that this is what the king said. The king has not read the letter. Out. He doesn't know the content. But his authority is back in it. Influence is manipulating authority. Influence is doing what? Manipulating authority. And getting what she doesn't have power to get. And that's exactly what happened. The Bible said there was none that so they said to do evil like Ahab. So much they said in wisdom and in riches. Ahab they said in evil. Who Jezebel his wife steered up. And he did very abominable in following idols. According to all the things as he did, as did the Amorites who the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. But 27, it came to pass. When Ahab had those words, when Elijah had pronounced judgment on the family, 
He put sackcloth upon his flesh, fasted and laid in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the teacher and said, Seest thou how he have humbled himself before me? Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. But in his son's days will I bring the evil upon him. Showing that that man was not that bad. You see, he repented. When Elijah came and talked, he repented. And God changed his mind. He wasn't that bad. It was his wife. If you do not know you are, your role in the world, you will read your house. Will. Still, the Bible did not say the woman is just the man is justified because you have one wife who is misbehaving. No wives. So finally, I think I'll stop here. Now, please, can you talk to us on the man? I said I will, but go ahead. Let me see what you can bring out. Let me see. The time is up. Let me see what you can say on the man. Amen. Amen. Alright. I noticed something. Adam didn't communicate to his wife well. He didn't imprint it on her what the word of the Lord said. Yes, he told her, but he could have stamped it down into her spirit that this is what the Lord said and you must do it. And I said here that he didn't. The Bible said that God gave him the garden to dress and keep. He wasn't dressing the garden. He wasn't keeping the garden. Because if he was, he would have known when the serpent came to tell his wife this. And then he allowed her to talk with the devil. I want you to notice that the day we studied this, two days after, I was saying, it's my duty. I, I was dressing up in the mirror and I was saying, so it's my duty to defend my family. It's my duty to defend my family. She walked in and said, what are you saying? I said, what we studied two days ago. He said, what do you mean? I said, only one thing rested on me more than other things. That the blame is on the man. Because he was the one giving the charge to get the home. That your wife began to talk to the devil. You know, I told you the devil doesn't come as ghosts. He comes through people. Then he used an animal. Today he uses men. He could be a sister in the church. Then, little, are your husband? That guy, he's a James Bond, no? Don't believe anything he says. If he tells you he's going to the church, just know that he is at night mile. If he says he's going to Abba, know that he is somewhere behind the church. Now, in the family, there's supposed to be trust. How has the devil broken through? By breaking the chain of trust. So when the man says it, you don't believe it. The problem has started. You think he trusted Adam? The devil, when he finished talking, that just think about the beautiful Leviathan, one sister. May you not be a Leviathan, say amen. amen. Because you will crawl your belly. The Bible says, woe to him, to one of these will stumble. He says it's better for that person that he will not go. So don't think it's only those who commit to people the problem, the people who became instrumental to redeem them into their soul. But now look at this. The beautiful Leviathan begins on. Okay, I tell Adam told you. I, I think he's a. Uh, God knows! The day you eat this thing, your eyes will open. I meet a lady in Lagos. He said, forget that, you know, it's not when I was in the East. Now, my friend, she got a friend. That's how the elevator entered her. What was she introducing to her? Having a boyfriend in marriage. I forgot this thing. He said, I'm born again. He said, I see me that he's not born. You are born again, I'm born original. Say in Lagos, they all women do it. Like, you, you, you can't, how can you? You think the man is alone with you here? There was no other things happening. Can't you see sometimes? Do you know every time the man comes and she was searching the pockets? And what will be you if they see lipstick this thing on your When I came on the scene, things have gone bad. She has stepped into adultery. I tested it and the problem has started. And now she tells me, I don't like him anymore. The thing has disappeared. And now, you know, something about men that they can be doing that and be pretending. Something about women and what they tried. It, 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 the reaction is so drastic. 
they can't hide it. Something dies. A man can still play some game, come back, pretend, do some whatever. And some of them are listening to me. <laughs> You know, justice is that was who sentenced people in the court, so I don't think it got that far. I will ask madam, but uh, but I stand and look to this key interest, but it's the truth. A man, a sensitive man, if something starts going wrong, you will know. There's something about the makeup. So Adam's problem began with not a fusing that is struck. He did because he was able to say to the devil what God said. But she had not grasped it. She had not believed it well. As God said, and you may not eat of any tree of the garden, the next one will happen. God of your Satan! You are questioning God's authority. I believe God's word and that settles all my doubts. Say Amen. I don't have time to discuss. We, the devil will not give you suggestion when you don't give him attention. Say with me, satanic suggestion begins with satanic attention. If you don't listen to the devil, you put a brief in and start watching. And then at the end of the day, you come up, uh, I saw three people performing with one person. What would you look like? Satanic suggestion. Then it progresses and progresses. That, that guy was tossing me in the office. One day, let my husband just misbehave. He said, all those things, he does. I'm taking it to, uh, I'll just tell the man, follow him and go. He hasn't done it yet, but he's there. Then the process matures. One day, there's a little boy in the house. She leaves, I'm going for work, and work ends somewhere else. Or, oh, you see somebody you know, every time this person visits you, all he tells you is contrary to what authority tells you. There are three authorities, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and your spiritual leaders. Everything he tells you is all process. That person is in the theater. Tell him, like Jesus said, get the behind. You will not be able to always say to someone, get the behind this setup. We can put the devil in your mind and clear from that person and give that person long road. There are relationships I had to run away from. Even in ministry. I have found out that not all ministers have the same motive that I have. I have seen people who come around and wear, and then before you, know, you just notice that the direction is who are going. They did not come here for lives or souls. If you don't want to learn evil, you break. You do what? You buy God. Continue, continue. Genesis 1 to Jadius. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over all the fish of the sea, and over all the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God gave Adam dominion. He did not exercise his dominion here. Because if he did, even if the woman had talked to the devil, he wouldn't have eaten of that fruit. He would have rebuked. Now listen to this. I have once wondered if Eve ate and Adam didn't eat, what will happen to the woman's family? There will be no fall. You and I ate. Jesus did it. That's why we're still saved. Jesus is the symptom of the first Adam. He is the second Adam. Because there is a blood atonement that takes care of sin. Adam as the priest of the house could have applied that. He wouldn't have waited for God to come down to kill the first animal. Or he would go to God in prayer. This is what has happened in my home. God will say, apply blood, but then cast the serpent out. You have the authority. He failed to exercise the authority in that. Sometimes devil talks to one member of the partner. You know, it could be and today he talks to men too. The defense of the home begins here. The defense of your Christian life begins here. The defense of the ministry begins here. The defense of the dignity of the kingdom begins here. 
in the face of the testimony of the gospel of Jesus. The devil can raise one tiny to just to discredit the gospel. For the unbelievers to now look and say, forget that. Is this was who are supposed to be did it? Then people can go to hell for your misbehavior. He failed to exercise dominion. That is the message that stayed with me more. Why? Because I wanted to take my responsibility. I don't believe in giving excuse for saying. I want the day we're studying, I wanted to take my own responsibility. It's not to show me the woman your own part. It's my own part that is important to me. And when I saw that it is my duty to guide the hope, that means I've noticed that because you are studying in this house, it is that system. I stay listening, that relationship ends. I noticed that some unfunny move I've started here. The keys are going wide. And I noticed there is that friend. One of my sons have brought in one guy and he began to learn how to steal. You see, in Igbo they say, they will not attach you, so they cannot attach you. The next thing is going to happen. You will join the eat, good eating, the young eating goals. You will receive interpretation after. It's a tongue that I speak. This is the tongue of evil land. You can talk in tongues of men and angels. <laughs> hey! Let's just continue. And then we see what, what will happen. When God asked him why he was naked, he said the wife God gave him. He did not take responsibility for what he did. He said he blamed his way. Notice that one, all men here. Irresponsibility is one of the reasons we are here. Have you studied God's nature and character? He is the merciful God, forgiving iniquity. The Bible says God does not change. So it's not just the sin. The answer for the sin has been available. Have you ever read that the Bible says the Lamb of God that was slain for when? The foundations of this world. You know what? God has preempted the problem, has provided the answer. The problem is man refused to own up. He refused to take responsibility. One of the signs of irresponsibility is putting blame. And she said, listen, I'm going to be, if you want to go to hell for your wife, go to hell. If you want to die before your time, for your wife, die. He gave pleasant blame. He blamed the wife. They thought the wife would become responsible. The wife blamed the serpent. I wonder, maybe the devil was given a chance to well, blame God, so God didn't allow him. <laughs> you didn't create me. Did I create you as an evil? I created you as Lucifer, perfect. Why are you not evil? You made up your mind. I don't want to get there, because I know people have some funny questions there. The origin of evil. So who created the devil? But I have one news for you. God took responsibility. That's why he came down to die for the consequences. So God took responsibility because he's the God of creation and he has paid the price so he has offered a way out. The problem is that man is not taking responsibility. You don't get saved until you own up your sin that you are sick. There will be no need for the remedy if you don't know that you are sick. And Jesus said to this one, he said, if you knew that you were blind, I would have opened your eyes. But now you think you see. That's why you die in your blindness. That's one of the dangers of sin. That it, it, the Bible calls it the deceitfulness of sin. People don't just commit it, it blinds the person who is committing it. So Adam had a responsibility. Yes, go ahead. And finally, Adam showed up everything that God had committed into his hands to the devil. And based on First Timothy 2, where the Bible said that man was not deceived, in other words, he knew the consequences of his action. Adam committed what the Bible we call high treason. Do you know what is high treason? Another word I can use that is close enough is betrayal. Adam betrayed God's trust. God entrusted to this man the dominion of the whole realm of the earth. Rule here like a rule in heaven. There will be no need for the prayer. Jesus did not pray that your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Adam was supposed to continue that thing. That God is doing all that. God entrusted to Adam his government, the headship of his government on earth. But I'm going to tell you one more thing that is shocking. The day I learned it, it broke my heart. 
The only thing that gives God joy and pleasure is the woman family. You see, God created the family before creating the church. If this ministry will succeed, this marriage will have to succeed. If any career you think you are into will reach its peak, your marriage will have to work. God made the family, which is the first church, and then made the church as the family became a foreshadow, a similitude of the church. That's why in leadership, in pastoral leadership, if your family is in disorder, forget your pastoring job. It won't work. So the family was the closest thing to the heart of God. The devil turned God's family over to Satan. He became Satan's family. That's what Jesus could look at one beast when he made him and say, Ye are of your father. Then you have changed your children. You have changed your image. And then, you know one more thing? God entrusted to Adam the stewardship of his joy. That means he's happy when he said he saw everything so it was very good. Indirectly, if anybody will not praise me, I will praise myself. I know that I performed well. Then the Bible said he made everything for his pleasure and now for his pleasure we were made. In other words, the pleasure of God was entrusted to man. God then said to Adam, multiply the pleasure and then to pick up people like you who will make me happy, who will walk after my will. God, the devil, the devil came to get to God by attacking the object of his love and joy. So Adam sold out everything. This is like divorce. The impact on that, not just on the people, on the only kids. On the children. Is it something like extramarital affairs? The impact on that on those on both kids, or even the ones that have been born that are going. You know the shocking truth that has dawned on me earlier that as little as they are, they sense tension in the home and understand when that are more of quality. And it's that destroying something in them at that early stage. Many of the violence you see in society is because of problems in the home. God entrusted all that to the man. Man sold it out. So the whole of the human family and the progression that follow will give birth, get pregnant and bring forth children. They become like the devil. That's why they say, in seeing what did my mother conceive me, in the need to what I have born. Adam knew that this would happen as he did it. That was why he was not separated. Do you know the consequences of your actions? Can you pay for what you're doing? Can you pay for disobedience? Do you know the wages of sin? It is dead. Not just physical, but the second death in a place where you were totally separated from God, called the hand and lake of fire. Do you have enough to pay for that? From eternity to eternity in hell, it is summarized, I summarized it this way. For Adam, we allowed her to talk with the devil and his agents. Someone said, what if the devil comes through utter situation in the mind? Will I know? At least you will know when words start coming out. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's the way to start operating the thing. She doesn't trust your love anymore. That's the way to show her that you still do. She doesn't believe in your words anymore. Then will build your integrity. You will go to take responsibility at every stage. A man. He did not exercise his God giving dominion over the serpent. And if you read Psalm 8, you see God giving total dominion. He said, Over all the works of my hand. So, three, he did not get the garden, so he allowed the devil in. That garden, remember, is the home, it is your business, it is your personal life, it is your church. He allowed the devil in. Or four, 
He did not discern the change in his wife after she had eaten the food. She, he could have said, you don't test death and not feel it. When he joined her to eat it, the impact was instant. God didn't wait for 10 days before coming. Immediately, he knew that they were naked. They were afraid. Fear came in, shame came in, and all that. A drastic change occurred. He failed to discern when negative changes began to occur in the woman. Every time she's always sick, she's always sick. Why don't you find out? It's not just pan panadol. Something could be wrong. What is breaking her defense? What is breaking her defense? Why is the spirit of the family breaking through in your home? Find out. And break off that thing. Why is the covenant not working in that area in your home? He himself doubted God's word or he wouldn't have joined her. Because when she gave her, gave him her own gospel for the devil, he compared the two and obviously joined her own. In other words, if a woman decides to be unruly and not follow the word, I will not go in that direction because of her. It takes two people to fight. Funny enough, they said, be careful how you scold a madman because two people, another person might not know which of you is a real madman. They show, they show the high level of irresponsibility by blaming his wife instead of taking responsibility. They committed high kiss by betraying God's trust in him. His power to reproduce people like God, the God-like being, because what image of God was entrusted to him is to reproduce human beings after that. God don't give birth to heaven. Or he uses Adam to reproduce people after his kind. Adam sold it out. Adam sold the dominion. I hope I hope she may pass us our tissue down. Adam for his was not handed over to the devil. That's why the devil is the God of the his sleep. He transferred everything that God gave him to. Because I will ask you, you list the five things that pastors list. Then he also assumed that Eve understood what the Lord said. There was no effective communication there. I looked at the woman's own. First, she made up with the devil's ideas, entertained his thoughts, his suggestions, instead of dealing with it when it's still a suggestion. Two, she even engaged in a discussion with the devil and listened to him instead of listening to God. Three, she now went ahead and took decision without consulting her husband. That is, she carried out the action before asking him. If she did, that thing would have been checked. Four, she went ahead to entice her husband and to use her power of influence to lure him. And that's why many kings and many great men have fallen to them because of women. Four, she had a problem with her tongue, talkativeness and gossip. She was sold the family secret over to other people, to her enemies. If that legator come, is a woman. Hey, hey, how you doing now? Hey, in my hands, how that is just, you know, or well, you know men now. I'm sure you have some problem. Why don't you tell me? Hey! Any woman whose tongue cannot be controlled, is finished. One of the most shameful things I see, the only person who is in authority he should be walking on horses, now walking on foot. Can you imagine? Sister, come on. You don't need to support the chief did last night. She came back in the house 1 a.m. And all that. You have already told demons, okay, your defense is breaking. Come in now. If probably the ones you are even telling is the type that is a husband snatcher, powerful. Hey, oh, you're no more in charge. Thank God, I've been looking for that man for a long time. This is the best time. You sold your defense out through your tongue. Did you read about the birth of Christ? How many of you have read the story? The shepherd got a revelation from heaven, a star appeared. 
Revelation was from God. Like what they got to them was from God. But the wise men, I mean, but who did they go to share with? With Herod, the very enemy. And came from Herod. Do you know where the Messiah is born? He said, eh? He did what work? When he saw that they would cut, he just balanced. He said, oh he said, a king of the Jews. He said, okay. It's more than the people, the priests. The second group that sold the information, the ministers, the priests, the scribes. They summoned all of them. Where is the Messiah? You that have prophetic insight, tell us. They sacked the Bible and found where it's written in the book of Hosea in Bethlehem, the city of Judah. He said, okay. Go and find him. When you didn't watch me, come and tell me. I will go also and do what? I will worship him. That night, thank God for his intervention. That night, the angel came on the scene. He says, Joseph, take me thy wife. You are the one who should take responsibility. If anything happens to this child, heaven will forgive you for life. You know, if Joseph had allowed anything to happen, the woman family will forgive you. Adam's own will respond. Take Mary, thy wife, and that child escape to Egypt. It's your duty to defend your home. The devil is about to hit the home. Stop him. And I'm told the open mounted wise men. They were wise, but their wisdom didn't teach them to keep their mouth shut. He said, don't go back to Herod and report. It, it, his motive is not what you think. He will kill that child. They narrowly escaped that place when all the kids born from three years down were massacred. Before their child dies, you can stop it. Before cancer hits, you can stop it. Before death comes to the home, you can stop it. Before accident happens, you can stop it. You don't open the door for the devil. And then when he hits you, ask, what happened? Of course, there's so many things we we'll put down here, but the time is almost 10 minutes more for this service. She doubted her husband. She began to see something beneficial and good in what God said is bad and destructive. You know, women have the problem of law sometimes, you know. Yeah, some moves, but she used her power of influence negatively and wrongly. And she gave her service to the devil to use her as a tool. Because all the devil was targeting was Adam, not her. What the devil said, after I'm true, then I use you to get him. And that's exactly what he did. What is the remedy? We'll take that quickly, quickly, quickly. The remedy for the fall and the problem that happened there is provided in the New Testament. Sharp. We studied that together, but one scripture that got very close and gave hit the thing on the head in First Timothy chapter two. I read from verse eight. So God began with the man. I weep, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without doubt and doubting. In like manner also, the women adorn themselves with modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly rails, but which becoming women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer no one, no woman, to teach or to sub authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed. Then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was a transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Notice the order. There is deliverance from the cause of the fall for the womanhood, and there is for the man. It will come if we reverse what went on. The first prescription is to the man, and that is prayer. It defends of your calling. 
the defense of your family, the defense of the church, the defense of your Christian work is hid in your daily communion with God. When there is no family altar, there is family crisis. You heard the family that pray together do what? Stay together. That is where it began. How do you know? Today is so complex. She can watch one movie, get one idea, and like in America, women leave is taking overtaking the day. We are reading all kinds of materials, anti gospel materials. Or somebody can come and discuss and suggest, do you control people wherever they go? How will you know? The first thing is that the devil is taking care of when we come on man and Messiah. I think let me just point to this one. He stop at this one because we can't go. I think what will happen is uh, how many of you want me to finish this on Wednesday? Let me be sure. Or maybe you don't want me to finish it. Okay, how many don't want me to finish it? I don't believe in serving food, you don't need. <laughs> how many don't want me to finish it? Let me see your hand. Uh, you have to go, you have to go. Or I have to close the service. How many want me to finish it on Wednesday? Real, real, real. I will finish it on Wednesday. But the prophetic conference is supposed to start that day. We will see how we chip it in. We will see how we chip it in. But let me just zero in on this prayer part. Let me zero in. There is a defense of a family. You can go back. Thank you. There is a defense of a family. of your calling there is an offense of the life of your kids. The parable was told in Matthew 13 how a man sowed good seeds in his field. He didn't plan for any evil to come. He didn't plan to reap evil. If you wanted to reap bad, bad fruits, you would sow bad fruit seeds. Because whatsoever a man sowed, that he opened. But the Bible said the enemy came and sowed and Bible says he sold tars wine men seed. Sister, listen to this. Before you say that guy has broken their relationship and has busted you, you can stop it. You see that tar that you sold in one night doesn't grow the next morning. You can stop it before it grows. If you don't want that harvest, stop the seed and you won't get that harvest. You don't need to wait till you what the devil is doing to my child. Then you start crying, looking for deliverance. Like they say, prevention is better than what? Yeah. Defense. So you might see Jesus said, deliver us from who? And lead us not into temptation. Meaning, keep us away from it. Don't even lead us into it. Not to the level, can I resist raising? Somebody said, resist. As for this, this flee. He didn't say resist. I think there is such scriptures. It talks about youthful lust. He said, flee youthful lust. What? Flee youthful lust. He didn't say resist. So you toy with a naked woman or naked things or immodest things. And say you are resisting the devil. You're joking. He came to things like him and he said, Fear. Lead us not into temptation. You don't drag yourself to a position. You have not done anything yet. Yes, but you will. If you continue in that kind of mess. You stop the devil before he stops you. You stop sin before he kills you. You kill it before it kills you. In prayer, that's where one of our first responsibilities is found. Is there anything wrong with that? Get me another man. Be busy, be busy. Get me another one. Bring the two of them in case. Mm. 
If you will use an auction to do these things, you don't use head. So in the phone is disconnected. I will only tell you words. And you can disconnect us if you don't know. Oh, hear this. Hear this. You can preempt what the devil is about to do and stop it. Prayer. Do you know you can pray for kids that are not your boy? You know you can pray for an accident that has not happened against it, not for. Do you know you can pray against seeing your lawyer competent? You see that thing you call cancer after he has gone, it came there as his seed. You could have destroyed it before it would cost you 40,000 in the hospital. That's where the man, number one responsibility of the man is found. And the prayer will not work if you're doing it with rot or without like that place said. Lift up holy hands without rot and doubt it. And I'll show you what rot does quickly. If you want the serpent not to enter your garden, if you don't want the serpent in your business, if you don't want the serpent in your home, if you don't want to suffer it in your life, obey Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Hear it, see it. See it. Verse 26. Be angry and sin not. And let not the sun go down upon your what? Rods. Now it's natural in money that people sometimes can be offended and they get angry. After that, drop it there. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said, increase my volume. The Bible said, a malice be children, but in understanding be men. That means when it comes to things like unforgiveness and quarrel, be like kids. They just do it now, they'll forget the next time they are playing. But when it comes to understanding, be mature. It is natural that sometimes people can get angry, but God said, don't let the song. Don't ever carry anything against another person in your heart and sleep with it. Do you know, I, I will tell you, this is a principle I hold. Nothing, no offense goes with me to the bed and work up with you. No. No offense. If you cannot practice that, notice the result of it. Be angry and sin. No, let not the sun go down and your anger neither give place to the devil. Or you open the door for the devil. Uh, there's, there's a way NIV writes it. There's a way uh, 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 amplified. Look, who has amplified here? Who has amplified here? Let me see. You have amplified here. You should start buying amplified. It helps you, like my voice. If I'm talking but it's not amplified, you might not hear me well. Amplified Bible, it, it, it enlarges what is said, so it makes it understand it clear. Okay, NIV. NIV. Are you there? Look at chapter 4. 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, or do not give the devil a foothold. Or do what? Do not give the devil a foothold. Because if you do that, you have invited the devil in. Already, New Testament definition of witchcraft is concentrated evil thought against another. What? Concentrated evil thought against another. You are being a witch. The wife has it against the husband, you are bewitching him. The husband has it against the wife, you are bewitching her. Another thing, when you define witchcraft, when anger is taken to bed and is stored in the heart, it moves to the realm of bitterness and matures into witchcraft. Where you literally, it might come to a point where you wish some evil against the other person. Or you know that some good will come for him, you wish that that good doesn't come. 
They might be praying. We want to buy a You are becoming a witch. Read Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22. The loss of the flesh is one of them is witchcraft. It is not someone you have one old woman in your village flying in the night. It is you that is flying in the night that is destroying your house. You are the one flying. So if a witch comes and bites and kills your baby that night, you say witch did it. No, not witch. Your rod did it. That's what there is a defense. There is a cover in the home. The devil doesn't break it or to give it the world. That's why the practice of forgiveness, which is one of the basic things in any relationship, especially in a marriage relationship, is very important. Colossians 3 said it especially to men. And I think, I don't know why he said it to me because sometimes women can be something else. But he said this to men. Colossians 3. My father said, he wanted to get married. His father told him, go and buy a ship. Train that ship and raise it. If you succeed, you I know you are mature enough. He started. Every day you'll be kicking the little kick that thing. He said, you say you can handle a woman. He said she will be worse than this if you can you are going to kill your wife with your hand. He said they behave alike at times. Or you see another one, he says she go, you see the shop not showing it. Say, oh, you can even give it a, a pet name. Oh, wow. and you see the ship. So you make a noise, he answers. Ship is the best. That's when it comes to followership and fellowship. Ship is ultimate. They, are, they live in company, they enjoy group. That's the way you see it alone, they are straight. Then when you come to followership, they know their shepherd and they follow. You have to tie a rope on a pig. What do you call on it? He goes. To keep it moving. <laughs> I've talked in another tongue. I hope you know that's talking in tongue. Huh? What if he came out in Dada Coach? You won't have known. So he came out in the one you will know. Don't mind me. Colossians 3, verse 19. Husband, love your wives and be not bitter. Don't use witchcraft on them. Be not bitter against them. First Peter, First Peter chapter 3. It destroys your family. 